today we are going to make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not going to be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built them themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. As you can see, we're making some progress on the uh, train layout. I got a whole bunch of trees scattered today. Recently, I made a hotel, or a hotel, a motel, and a diner here on the layout. And we'll take a look at that here in a minute. But I've got this area that goes kind of behind my TV. And we'll take a look at that here in just a second. And I thought, hmm, the road just kind of disappears. I need a tunnel portal. So I'm going to go through step by step how I make a tunnel portal out of just some uh, styrofoam. So stick with us and let's look at how to make a tunnel portal out of styrofoam. So here's the area that we are looking at on the layout. We'll kind of zoom out here a little bit. Yeah, I've got all these pine trees. So over here in this, uh, in this little corner behind the, uh, behind the television, I built this little diner because, well, what good's a motel with a pool without a diner? And yeah, the road just kind of disappears back there. The idea is it should kind of, you know, go around behind here, behind here, behind here, behind here. Anyway, over to this main road here and link up with the rest of the town eventually. But what I wanted to do is right here. I think I'm going to build a tunnel portal. I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, what gave me the inspiration for this was Bingham Canyon, Utah, and the really cool uh, tunnel that they used to have uh, there to go from one side of the mountain to the other. So um, stick with us and let's see how we're going to build this. Looks like about five, five inches tall. I'm gonna have about I'm gonna have about five inches wide, and I want to put it right back there where that uh, where that whatever that is candle holder. Okay, now we've got it cut. I'll pull it apart, and you know if if I wanted it perfect on both sides, that would be you know I'd, I'd have to do something different, but I don't um, because this is gonna be the inside of my portal, so we're gonna be we're gonna be just fine on that. Okay, now for the for the hole, and you can actually cut this a lot thinner, um, but I just decided to keep it this thick, and we'll see how it turns out. So now for my road, I need to measure my road, and my road is approximately looks like two inches. Really, is that it? Put a car going one way and a car going the other. Ooh. Okay, so let's let's bring it over here and so drop let's it. Measure what we? we need, and I think for an opening on this one, I'm thinking three inches minimum. What if I went three and a quarter? Okay, so three and a quarter. Okay, so now we're gonna measure this out. So I don't wanna use my hobby knife because, well, it's, it's too, you know, the blade's too narrow to do my engraving. Um, but I'm, what I'm gonna use is my uh, my bread knife um, to do my engraving with. Now I could use you know some other kind of knife but I want to make sure that I've got um, a, a decent engraving on this. So what I'll do is I'm going to pick a width that I want to uh, to go and I'm going to use this finger as a guide And I'm just gonna engrave and make my make my um, 
well, rocks, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> stones, till I get to the, the cornerstone here on the top, or the set stone, keystone, I, can, I don't know, whatever the heck stone this is. It's a little bit taller. So, I'm going to engrave that one. Try and keep these fairly consistent. Going around. So that's roughly what I've uh, what I've come up with. So I'm going to cut this out so that I can go on and make um, make all the rest of my stones. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of have this stand out just a little bit. So let me get this uh, cut out with the hot wire cutter and we'll be right okay. back. Here we've cut this out with the hot wire uh, tool. And I'm going to engrave these a little bit different. But what's going to happen is I'm going to put this just slightly out. So it's kind of raised. See? That's uh, how that's going to turn out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to engrave, and put my hot wire tool away. I'm going to start to engrave these and I want to do them, uh, let me see here, let me see here, I've got a better measuring device, hang on one second, right here. I'm actually going to use my metal, my little metal ruler here. Um, Ooh, I got millimeters on here. Cool. I'm going to go every five millimeters. I want to um, I want to do a little engraving. So I'm just going to make a mark at every five with my hobby knife. Can you imagine trying to do this with that other piece still attached? Oh boy, that would have been a would have been a treat. Okay, so now I've got that marked. Hopefully you can see the markings I've got there. And I am just going to do a little engraving. There's the beginnings of it. Now I will come back and I'll show you how to do this in a minute. We'll use a screwdriver. And we're going to do independent. Actually, maybe we'll just do it right now. We actually found this uh, the screwdriver bit for one of the tools I have. We're going to use this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of just engrave in here some bricks. Kind of hard to see but yeah you can kind of get the idea and we're going to go ahead and we're going to save you from the whole thing i'm going to get this whole thing done we'll come back and take a look at it in a minute okay now that we've got the um, the brickwork in there we are going to take this other piece this spare piece and we're going to we're going to cut some strips I could use the knife to do this. I'm choosing to try and do it with the uh, with the hot knife. It's the hot knife, the cutting tool. Sorry. Um, and what this is going to be is this is going to be the, the cap stone for the top of the um, the top of this. Um, I've already cut another strip, and I'm going to see which one I like better for more of a cap. Um, I really like that one better. Till I dropped it. Okay, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, uh, the, the the supports 
from the side supports. And I'm going to eyeball this and just cut it here. And make these. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue. Excuse me a second while I put some glue on here. Uh, just some white PVA glue. And then we're going to glue these into place. And I'm going to take these little caps, capstones that I've made for it. Um, and I'm going to put one there. And I'm going to glue the other one there. And voila! Kind of get the idea. Um, now I'm going to engrave these. I'm going to hold them. And I'm going to freehand this, this, this part of the engraving. And why? I don't know. But I am going to make these blocks bigger than the, um, than the blocks on the other rest of the portal. Eyeball them so we get okay. Hopefully, you can see. I know the lighting, sorry, folks, the lighting really is the pits, but um, dang it. Well, I guess you're not going to be able to see the, in, the engraving here uh, that we've done. All right. Let's put this capstone on, the one that I've dropped. I hate it when I do that. Hi, Harold. Okay. Yep. Oh, he's got to pick up something off the floor. Okay. So this, uh, this capstone here, let's give it a nice crisp uh, front let's see how this looks I think I can live with that yeah I think I can live with that So, I'm going to put a little PVA on here. Now, I could use Gorilla Glue. Uh, Gorilla Glue would be really nice for something like this. Um, but I'm not. I'm just going to use some regular old PVA. Now, I can pin this down to get it to hold better. Let's, uh, let's try that. See if these little pins that I've got will be long enough. I believe they will be. Yep. We'll see. I want this capstone to stick out just a little bit. Um, just a little bit from the top. I think I think I think I'll be okay with that. I think I'll be okay with how that how that looks. Um, yeah. Okay. Now uh, I'm gonna mix up some stuff that I'm gonna use for the grout. So we'll be okay. Right back. So what I've mixed up here is just some uh, plaster of Paris. And I'm gonna take a brush. I have to work fast, and I am just gonna put this all over. Uh, I'm going to work it in to the bricks. Um, I'm going to work it into the grout. 
And the idea isn't to cover up everything. The idea is that I want it to get down into the grout. I want it to be on the bricks. I want to give some actual like rocky, sandy type uh, texture to this. So we are going to work it into the um, cracks the best we can. Uh, because remember, there was some chunks uh, of this, uh, uh, yeah, the styrene that had that had come out. So we just want to make sure we we blend it all together so that it look like rock or stone, I should say. Got to work fairly quickly if I'm going to use plaster because plaster has a tendency. Plaster Paris has a tendency to dry rather quickly. Okay, we're starting to fill in here. I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let this set just a little bit before I come back, and uh, I'm gonna wipe it, wipe most of it off with. Um, with a damp sponge. So now I'm going to brush over this and I want to leave just a thin layer of the um, of the plaster in place. Whoop. There's a piece that didn't quite dry yet. So I still want to be able to see the bricks. And like I said, we want to leave some texture on the uh, <coughs> on the blocks, the bricks. So once it's dry, I fit it to the area that I want it to be and I can see that I'm gonna to have to do some trimming. And you can see here where I've already made the trim cuts and I've just kind of placed them back so you can see what I've had to cut off, but I had to cut some of it off. Now, it doesn't look right just sitting there as a portal. I need something inside the portal. So I have took I took this extra block that I had. You can see it's kind of rough on the inside. That'll make a perfect inside of the tunnel portal. And so I'm going to just fit it up here, make sure everything uh, fits squarely. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some Gorilla Glue on the edge and glue it in place, let it dry for a couple hours. And then I've mixed up this gray latex paint that I had. And you can use any acrylic, that's fine, but uh, don't, use a, <laughs> don't use an oil base. But anyway, so here I am. I've got this, uh, this gray paint mixed up and ready to go. And we're just gonna slather it on the entire thing inside and out. Now we're gonna let this dry. It took about an hour to completely dry and it was ready for the next step. And you can see it's a pretty decent stone color. So once that's dry, I'm going to take and add a little bit of white to some of it and a little bit of black to some of it and do these random blocks of a little bit lighter color and a little bit darker color. I know it looks funny here, but don't worry about it because what I'm going to do next is use some of Larry's bath water. If you wonder what that is, check out some of my other videos and I talk about a pin wash. So I'm going to give it a complete wash of Larry's bath water and then once that's dry, put a little bit of glue on some areas. I'm going to put some moss on and I just used some of the Woodland Scenics um, fine turf for that. And here it is, all finished with the wash. Uh, the wash is now dry. You can see how it turned out and there it is on the layout. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.